Despite nationwide openings, the corona numbers in Great Britain are falling day by day. Scientists have not yet found a clear explanation for this, but there are plausible theories. The German media Focus explains the most important three, and I thought I should bring them to you as well. What is currently happening in Great Britain is sometimes referred to as a corona miracle. Despite wide openings, the number of infections there has halved in the past two weeks. And this despite the fact that the majority of the corona measures were lifted on July 19th, which Prime Minister Boris Johnson proclaimed Freedom Day, despite all warnings. A month ago in The Telegraph, WHO official Mike Ryan called this procedure an epidemiological, uh, no, epidemiological stupidity. The current trend and the number of cases contradicts this attitude. On Friday, the British health authorities reported a good 29,800 new corona cases. On July 15th, there were still around 60,000. The infections have been falling since then, if we leave out the theory that it's about the tests. Scientists do not yet have a clear justification for this. Nobody really knows what's going on, explains epidemiologist John Edmonds from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Med Medicine in an article in the renowned journal Nature. In particular, it's not clear whether the peak of the third wave has already been passed or whether it is an outlier caused by complex social factors and the numbers will soon rise again. Epidemiologist Timo Ulrichs recently assessed the development more pessimistically. According to him, there is no reason for the numbers in Great Britain to continue to decline permanently. Especially not because the significantly more contagious Delta variant is predominant in the United Kingdom, as he recently explained in an interview with Focus. So it is unclear whether the decline will continue. The reasons why the numbers are currently falling so rapidly are just as unclear. But there are various theories that could explain the cause of this development. Epidemiologists blame three main reasons. The first one is the school effect. In Great Britain, just like in many German federal states, for example, summer holidays are currently taking place. And that means there are no classes, many contacts are avoided. Most of the facilities were not closed until July 23rd. This would mean that the effect would not yet be visible. As epidemiologist Edmonds explains, however, a school-related decline in the number of cases could still be noticeable. Because some students were at home around a week earlier and many older students had already left school after their exams. In addition, around 20% of the students were recently in self-isolation due to contact with infected people. The contact with school-aged children has decreased significantly in the past few weeks, explains Edmonds. If that is the explanation for the decline in infections, the importance of schools and young people for the pandemic would be greater than previously assumed. And the second is the summer effect. The fact that there are holidays in Great Britain has another effect. It is less tested due to the holidays, as epidemiologist Timo Ulrichs told Focus. People are not on site, but vacation and largely um, forego testing. In addition, because of the good weather, people were more outside, which makes transmission less likely. The statement also cites Christina Pagel, specialist in data analysis in healthcare at University College London in the Nature article. The warm weather would have meant that outdoor, me outdoor meetings were preferred. The risk of infection is significantly lower there than indoors. She also confirms that there have been fewer tests recently. For example, people with mild symptoms may have hesitated to take a test out of fear of cancelling vacation plans if the result was positive. Other experts noted, however, that the proportion of positive tests also decreased as the number of tests declined. That would speak in favor of an actual decrease in infections. And third is the European Championships effect. The scientists bring another possibility into play in the Nature article. The decline in the numbers could appear more pronounced due to its sharp increase in July. The scientists blame the European Football Championship, 
among other things for this. For the occasion, many people gathered in bars, private houses and stadiums, explains Edmonds. The events coincided with the currently increased infection rate, especially among men. In addition, the British were made particularly aware of the contact uh, tracking app provided by the Ministry of Health after the football games. Many would only have found out about a positive case in their immediate environment and had themselves tested or isolated. Edmund calls this happening pandemic, like many others in the media do now. The falling cases also raised the issue of herd immunity in the UK. After all, the UK has a vaccination rate of over 73%. In addition, around 6 million of the almost 66 million inhabitants have been infected there so far. The number of unreported cases could be a lot higher. This means that the majority of the population could already have antibodies against the coronavirus. For example, the, official, uh, the Office of National Statistics estimates that more than 92% of adults have antibodies, either from vaccines or infections. Nevertheless, experts do not yet assume the effect of herd immunity, because the decline in the number of infections was noticeable across Great Britain around the same time. That speaks against such an effect, as epidemiologist Edmund explains. Herd immunity would occur at different times in different places, he says. As of Monday, there are no more capacity restrictions in pubs and restaurants in Scotland, by the way. The nightclubs are allowed to open. First Minister Nicola Sturgeon calls on people to remain cautious. Three weeks after almost all pandemic-related restrictions in England ended, Scotland lifted most of the regulations. With a few exceptions, the distance rules have been lifted since Monday. There are no longer any capacity limits for pubs, restaurants or events. Nightclubs are allowed to open. However, masks must still be worn in authorities and on public transport. In schools too, it's still compulsory to wear a mask. However, with the corona infection, the entire class no longer has to go home in isolation. Um, Scotland's First Minister Nicola Sturgeon spoke of perhaps the most significant date yet in the pandemic. At the same time, she called on everyone to be careful. The pandemic is not over yet. Almost all corona measures in Wales, except for the mask requirement, have been over since Saturday. In England, there have been no legal requirements for wearing masks since July 19th. The rules are still toughest in the province of Northern Ireland. Here, the government wants to decide in a few days whether to relax. Nicola Sturgeon has admitted her nervousness about removing the majority of COVID lockdown restrictions in Scotland. The First Minister believes uh, it, it was the correct time for the entire country to move beyond the level system. However, urged caution against the virus, and I can't say that often enough. Legal requirements for physical distancing, except in healthcare settings and gatherings, have been removed, and all venues, including nightclubs, are now able to reopen, as I said. Some measures, such as the requirement to wear face coverings indoors, in public places, and on public transport will stay in place. And I come back to the face coverings later on. I learned something very interesting today. Speaking on Good Morning Britain earlier, the SNP leader revealed there were some butterflies in her stomach about lifting restrictions across the country. Sturgeon said, I think there's always going to be nervousness when we lift restrictions after such a long period. I have to be honest that there's some butterflies in my stomach about it today but I think it's the right moment to do this. We see daily fluctuations in our case numbers, but the trend is downwards. And of course, the vaccine is giving significant protection. This is the right moment to remove legal restrictions, to try to get that greater normality back in our lives. The virus hasn't gone away and the pandemic is not over. I think it's premature to declare victory over it or, or freedom from it. Oh, she, who does she mean with that? We've got to continue to be careful, which is why in Scotland we are keeping some sensible precautions in place. For example, face coverings and in many indoor settings. 
It's a moment to feel optimistic. This has been a long, hard year and a half, but we've got to continue to exercise caution. The virus is unpredictable and I think that we underestimated at our peril. Let's try to strike the right balance as we feel perhaps a bit more optimistic than we have for quite some time. Under the new rule, double vaccinated adults and all children will be able to avoid self-isolation if they are a close contact of someone with coronavirus um, as long as they are symptomless and provide a negative PCR test. Pupils and teachers will have to continue wearing masks indoors for up to six weeks after school's return. The government has said that. But as I said, whole classes in school will no longer have to stay at home if an infection is discovered. Although children and adults who are higher risk close contacts will be told to isolate. Since the announcement, the Scottish government has changed its position on requiring masks in nightclubs and people will also now be allowed to drink while standing up in pubs. Outdoors events of more than 5,000 people and indoor events of more than 2,000 will have to apply for permission from local authorities and the government to go ahead. When asked if she would like to see younger people given the vaccine, she said, I hope we do see a position soon where the evidence and data allows the GCVI, the body that advises us on these things, for younger children, for young people over the age of 12. I want to see this vaccine offered to as many people in Scotland as possible because that obviously extends the protection. But of course, I'm a politician. I'm not an expert on public health. So we need to listen to and there might be another point in some other direction. Follow the advice of our expert advisors. But I think 16 to 70 year olds is a positive step forward. We started vaccination of that age group at the weekend and from tomorrow 16 and 17 year olds can go to drop in clinics to get vaccinated and I would take this opportunity to encourage them to do so. I do hope that we will be able to extend vaccination to younger people sooner rather than later. And there are two things I learned in a phone call with a friend in England today. Um, I, I wasn't so really aware of um, because it's something that was quite normal here. And sometimes, you know, you project some things. Um, whenever I was talking about masks and face coverings in England, I thought it was kind of the same as it was here. But as I got it now, um, the requirement was not as it was here when the numbers were higher to wear FFP2 masks because I had to, she's visiting Germany soon and uh, because she's got family here. And uh, I had to explain to her to get some FFP2 masks because if the numbers would go up here, they they would be required on, on public transport again because we are not only required to wear masks in, in many places still, but they also tell us what kind of masks. In the beginning, I wore cloth masks um, and then it went up to medical masks and then it went up to FFP2. Uh, you know there are different kinds of protection by these masks if you, if you heard about this. The normal surgical masks protect the other people but not yourself really and the FFP2 is protecting both the wearer and the others and that's why on public transport when the numbers were at about 100 here, um, I know in UK is more than 200 still, we were only allowed to to enter a bus or a train with an FFP2 mask. So I was quite um, puzzled that, that they um, didn't have to do that there as well, uh, especially when the numbers were high in the past. Um, so that was uh, something I never thought about when I, when I did the research for those videos. So talking to people um, right there, and I still know quite a, a number of people there, is uh, interesting. I should do that even more often than I did. <laughs> but sometimes you, you skip topics, you think, oh, I don't, we don't have to talk about this. And the other thing is, we in Germany, when we get vaccinated by our doctors or in, in the centers, we just bring our um, WHO vaccination book, this little yellow book. Uh, Everybody is using it for vaccination because it's a WHO book and you can uh, show it on every country and you, you use it when you go to... I know some distant uh, locations where you need malaria vaccination or whatever. There's tons of those if you go to certain countries. 
And um, we always have this since we are kids and nobody here is, is thinking about this. But then I told her that um, she's required to bring that one when she's coming to Germany because the cards um, you get are not valid for entering Germany as a proof of, of vaccination. And um, she said, no, we don't have them. You might get them if you get those other vaccines for distant travel, but for, for COVID, we didn't get them. And so that was another new thing I learned because I thought, well, it's, it's, it's a standard thing. So that's quite interesting as well. To both things about the mask and the vaccination booklet, please um, leave a comment there if you, um, what kind you were using and what kind you are using. And um, it's easy to travel now again. It's e By the way, Germany is uh, on the green list in the UK and the UK is still uh, on a higher level in Germany, but it's easier to travel to Germany than when she's traveling back to the UK. She's got to do several tests and only be vaccinated when she comes here so that's that was interesting because she she called me for the information and i gave her um the link where she has to um put in all her data you have to um f fill in the form if you want to come to germany beforehand with your flight number your vaccination status and stuff like that and um so i gave it all to her and while i was talking to her of course i was asking her about something else that has nothing to do with the corona now but when i'm i'm talking about the discussion now i i want to tell you that one too um because so many brexit tears here come up with well, there are no empty shelves here i'm not talking i asked her and she's living in uh, southern england um not too far away from london and uh, she told me that as well at sainsbury's at tesco's and at asda they are having empty shelves for a couple of, of weeks already and so it's not a lie i'm telling here and it's not a lie that a lot of media here in germany are telling and some british as well of course and uh, people living there are telling me what they see and not for some kind of propaganda um they want to bring in, in comments or whatever what some Brexiteers seem to do here to, to hide that stuff. No, they are normal people living their daily lives and they are telling me what they see. And that's what I heard again firsthand today. So for people in other countries that don't experience that themselves, there are empty shelves still because of the lack of drivers there. And um, so it's always interesting to have those conversations and uh, you can leave your exp experiences uh, in the comments if, if you would like to do that especially about the masks and the um, vaccination certificate i know um, the british people do not really like uh, the thing about id cards and whatever uh, but those vaccination booklets really do help and they are who booklets so they are regarded as valid all over the world so they really do make sense. I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.